podcast. Okay, we're opening the doors. Let's see. Um, let's see who we got for the last webinar of the season. So far, it's menu. Okay. Yep, got people calling in. So, so we're about one minute before the webinar starts. You'll come on in, the, a 919 number. And if you're, if you're coming out on the computer, like, they great. If you can enter the city that you're in, that helps, helps myself and Joseph know more about where you're at. And maybe there's some examples that are more relevant to you, but at least, at least we kind of know who's in the room. So, so as you come in, please, you know, put the city in the chat box. And, it, and that's a good way to start using the chat box in the very beginning. If you have questions, I mean, put the questions to me and Joe, where we're, I, I think we're pretty approachable people. So, that, you know, just real time. If something from the webinar doesn't make sense or you want to go deeper, ask questions, certainly do it. Um, you know, this is this is the last webinar for the you know for the year. So we, we want to make sure that we get the right information out to you. So as, as you come in for the new folks, just uh, drop your your city into the chat box. I'm in um, I'm in Bethesda, Maryland, right outside of Washington, DC. And if you hear an accent, I'm from Houston. So I kind of by the way of the army, I ended up in Washington, D.C. back in 1991 after, after the Gulf War, and I, I stayed here ever since. So, um, so hey, Joseph, where, where are you right now? I'm out in Los Angeles, and just kind of getting to the topic of location and our subject today, location obviously matters a lot in terms of not only the impact of COVID on businesses, but uh, I read this morning, Colorado has launched their own uh, COVID relief program for businesses. I know out here in California, uh, there are a lot of programs available for businesses to get additional working capital. Um, so location matters a lot, uh, certainly these days. Yeah, that, that, that's good to know. So we're, we're going to cover a lot here. I see we've got Mary from Valley View, Texas. I mean, um, we're, we're coast to coast between you know, DC, California, Texas. So, uh, you know, th th this will be a small group today. So definitely lots of opportunity to interact with, with the chat group and definitely opportunity after the event to, to contact, you know, to, depending on what your needs are, either Joseph or myself. But if it's for lending or even getting your tax or accounts payable liabilities right, Joe's your guy. If you're getting your yeah. numbers right, I'm your guy. Yeah, and I can imagine now just, you know, it's already busy enough with the holiday season uh, being a business owner, and now you're having to deal with, you know, what's your business going to be uh, doing tomorrow? What's the state or local government going to do tomorrow that's going to impact uh. business or getting employees there? Or, uh, you know, a lot of business owners I've talked to, you know, just when they're kind of getting their feet beneath them, then they've got five employees out to get tested, right? Because they feel sick. It's just such a, such a strange and difficult time as we know. Yeah, it's a strange time. So, so we're, we're, we're right at a little bit after the hour, get, give people a chance to, to get settled. And Mary, we're, we're going to come back to your question in just a moment. But to kick things off, Joseph, are you ready? Yeah, let's go. Okay, so but my name is Kirk. I'm the CEO of Foresight CFO. Um, and in addition, I, I teach financial management at Georgetown University for grad students, to, you know, part of the mission that they help, help CEOs and mid-level management do even better with the numbers. And so I'm really happy, you know, Joseph and I have been working together for years now. So Joseph, I'm really happy to ha have you, you know, make us smarter about gaining access to capital. So would, would you introduce yourself for, for Sure, a sure. My name is Joseph Muse. I started a company called Business GPS about eight years ago. And the focus was helping businesses, it, but it, with a different model, with the contingency model, taking a longer term view. So our goal is helping companies improve their cash flow and really putting skin in the game from our perspective and taking that six month or 12 month view of where's your business going to be at that point? How do we get the right cash flow foundation in place? So some of that's with adding in additional working capital. Some of that's with restructuring some of the debt, removing the debt. Some of that's in marketing and, and some of that's just in general business coaching and advisory services, but it's all on contingency. Hey, let's take a look at your business. Let's figure out where you need to be six and 12 months and we help get you there. Then we benefit at that point. You know, it's putting the business first and the cash flow first because 
listen, as we know, businesses don't go out of business because they have cash. They go out of business because they don't have cash. So if you simplify it down, that's what we're focused on. Yeah, and I can speak firsthand. That that's what you do, right? So let, let's kind of let's launch by you know one level deeper to find out who's in the room here. I'm I'm gonna post a poll. There, got the that's a good point. Like maybe turn the ringers off and definitely chat with us. We're gonna come back to Mary's question, but let us know where where you're at and um, if you got questions, come to us in the in the chat box. So that, you know a little little more interaction. Um, you get a nice sized group here to you know probably get something done pretty good today. So um, if you could an answer the three questions in the poll and uh, your, your, your responses are completely anonymous, we'll show the statistical you know, outcomes so, so everyone knows who in the, who's in the room. But uh, the three questions, first one are, is, when do you need funding, right? Something immediate or something different up, up to six months out. So definitely answer that question. It really, really helps us a lot, Joseph and I, to you know, speak to your needs. Uh, the, the second question is how much funding do you need? So that there's brackets from, you know, 100,000 or less, uh, um, 100 to 250, 250 to a million and a, and a million plus. So what, you know, what, would, what would give you the, you know, the fuel in your tank where you can breathe again, you know, not, not be so stressed out or have growth capital, right? Lots of different uses. And then the, the third and the last question is, what is your expected top line revenue this year in 2020? This will be known as you know, the year of the, of the pandemic. You'll be telling the grandkids about this one. So in the bracket from you know, zero to five million uh, all the way up to the, the, you know, the 70 million plus, where, where, where do you guys sit? Okay, so just half a minute more if you wanna, um, if you wanna answer, uh, you know, this is definitely the year to vote. So answer the poll and we'll, we'll take the next step here. I'm gonna wrap it up in just a second. I'm curious on that first one, six months seems like an eternity. Uh, so I'm guessing ah. that a lot of people are gonna fall into that immediate or two week, one week uh, category. Yeah, basically 40% something pretty fast. You can, you, I'm sharing the results now. 40% uh, wanna get something done. And uh, is, that, is that doable, Joseph? Is there, is there you know, I know there's, it, it depends, but can you get money that fast? Sure, sure. You can, you know, so what we focus on is healthy funding or good funding. There's obviously the quick, you know, uh, cash advance, bank statements, what I'll call kind of funding. But uh, we just got a tech company out of Houston, uh, coincidentally, um, uh, a line of credit took us about seven working days, start to uh -huh. finish. Um, and we were just able to figure out another way of looking at their business where it would be attractive to a lender. So it can be done quickly. Uh, I'd say five to 10 days. Again, with the focus being on healthy money, there's a whole nother discussion about uh, maybe for another day about some of this quick cash that's flowing out there that really only uh, causes problems, significant problems down the road. Well, yeah, I've seen that where the, 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 they don't call it interest rates, but the fees are astronomical. I mean, so 80% so, so want money within three months. And then we got ba basically I don't know, almost 45%, you know, you know, that up to the quarter million. And then uh, another 20%, I, you know, I'm a finance guy, so I round, I round things off at 250 to a million. But 30% need a million plus, so there, there's definitely some work to be work to be done here. So that's 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 good to know, right? That's really good to know. Yeah, and okay. I'm, impressed, I'm impressed that the six months plus, the three months, you know, the, um, the the ability to plan and be prepared for that. I feel like a lot of business owners, when it comes to money, can be a little bit reactionary. They're so, you know, they're trying to put out fires every day. Their heads down and to stop and try to put together a proper plan for funding because there's a it has such a significant impact the right funding not all good fund not all funding is good funding um, so I for those business owners I think that's great that they're thinking that far ahead yeah really good it, 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 most, most of it not it's 80 percent are, are that zero to five million with the you know the twenty percent doing doing up to forty million that, that from a range standpoint so that, that boy that is helpful I'm, I'm glad 
I'm glad that you all responded. That makes it um, really good for us to dial into what you're looking for. So let's let's go, jo Joseph. We're ready. Sure. So, you know, getting the right working good times, pandemic times, getting the right working capital is critical because it lays the foundation for your business and your investment and your growth moving forward. And, and as an example of that, you know, going and getting a one year term loan that you have to pay two year term loan that you have to pay down relatively quickly, that layer of funding can limit you for additional funding after that. And it's certainly going to limit your cash flow because the amortization schedule is so is so limited. So I try to keep there are a lot of options out there. There's a lot of noise out there, uh, what I, I would say, regarding funding. So I try to keep everything with a very simplified, basic view. Let's not get, let's not overcomplicate it. So for working capital right now in the pandemic, there are essentially <clears throat> three categories that you have to draw from. One is asset-based lending. That's probably the most active right now that's real estate, that's accounts receivable and equipment loans, but there are other types of assets out there as well, but those are the three most common. And I would say that that industry, that lending area ha is almost where it was pre-pandemic. Yeah, in terms of equipment and real estate, they might take a little bit more conservative view of the overall value, but an asset-based loan is gonna give you good value for those assets and is typically going to give you a decent amount of time to pay it back. Uh, obviously, number two, the SBA government loans. Uh, everybody's familiar, I'm sure, with the Paycheck Protection Program, the PPP. There's also the EIDL that's out there. And there are also some of the traditional SBA Express loans, et cetera, that are also out there. So uh, that's an animal in and of itself, um, but everybody on this webinar should at least have received both the PPP and the EIDL, or at least have an application in on the EIDL that is working through the process of getting approved. That is, that's a gimme. Yeah, it's with uh, government bureaucrats sometimes, and so the process can be slow and tedious, but the money is so darn cheap you're not going to find money like this again. You know, we'll see what the government, if the government does anything here in the next day or two. I try to tell business owners, you know, let's not count on the government. Uh, but if they do approve something, then obviously that's going to uh, widen the options that are available. Uh, so there's the SBA government loan bucket. And then there's the credit score based lines of credit. So you've got uh, uh, banks who are still lending somewhat based on the credit worthiness of the business. But you have a lot of tier two and tier three lenders that will give you one, two and three year term loans based on credit score. And when I say credit score, what I'm talking about is the business owner's personal credit. Let's look at their balance sheet. Let's look at their credit score, their FICO, et cetera. And then based off of that, you can get you know, typically one to 300,000 if your uh, score and your personal balance sheet looks good. So those are the three main buckets that not only are we working in, but I'm talking about actually getting loans done, right? Because ultimately we can talk about other types of loans, but what we care about is during this time, this pandemic, what can get funded according to my needs and my time. Yeah. Hey, hey, Joseph, do you have a view on, you know, the next round of PPP, what, what that might look like compared to the, to the first round in terms of requirements? That's a great question. Everything that I have heard and read is that the PPP, there is going to be another round of PPP. However, it's going to be for those businesses that show a significant decrease in revenue year over year. So you're talking, they're trying to get the dollars to those businesses that are, for example, in hospitality, that's a, you know, the, in the restaurant business is a perfect example. 
anybody who's doing con con concerts, movie theaters, things like that, who have seen their revenue drop off 80, 90 percent. I think that's where the money is going to go. And what I've heard is that 50 percent decrease. I don't know what specific time frame the SBA is going to make you prove that for. Um, but, you know, we'll see. So that's I'm I'm very uh, convinced or confident that that's where that PPP money is going to go. Yeah, I, you know, I think it's fair to say it's going to be different. It, if you think the third round will be the same as the second round, I don't think so. I think it's going to be harder to get, limited industries, limited amount, show damages. Um, so, so something to keep in mind that um, which makes you know other sources even even more important to go to go get. So, so there's a couple of questions coming in. Do you mind if I throw those out to you now, Joseph? Okay. So the, the first one is for my my good friend Mary in, in Texas. You know, she's asking, you know, do you know of any programs available in Texas? For the transportation industry you know that's a good question i would have to look at texas uh more specifically um i'm sure there are some programs available um in the, some of the larger markets dallas houston etc but i think we'd have to probably look online and see that transportation is transportation is a tough business when times were good now it's even more difficult. So with transportation, I tend to look at equipment loans and I tend to look at the accounts receivable. So with transportation, your clients always pay, your clients pay and sometimes they tend to be great clients. So if we can look at it, again, look at the business differently, maybe not look at the business's balance sheet or cash flow, but let's look at the customers of the business and let's see if we can't figure out, well, the customers are credit worthy so let's try to put together a line of credit based on the balance sheet of the customers. So that's a, a different way of looking at it. But to Mary's point, we can uh, we can certainly follow up with you and take a look at Texas and see what's possible. Yeah. But that does raise a good point to go back to what we said in the beginning, which is Colorado, California. I know in Virginia, which is where our home office is located, there are business programs available at the state level. Now, that might only be ten or twenty thousand dollars, but it's Hundred twenty thousand dollars. Yeah, yeah, the, the, yeah. So, so I think kind of the, the general takeaway for something, especially a program like that, you got to do local research, find out that there, there's all kinds of government, economic development stuff going on. There might, there might, there might be something. And Texas is a pretty, you know, from an economic standpoint, a pretty robust state. So there's, there's, there's probably, probably things that some combination that the, the general stuff that, that Joseph deals with every day, and some specialty stuff, something something to consider. Uh, one, one more question from an anonymous. Uh, we got, he, he's asking, um, how are non-standard assets viewed for asset-based lending? And the examples he puts out there, he or she, they put out there, uh, you know, like, like, uh, like unsecured promissory notes, gas and oil royalties, court settlements. I mean, how, how are those kind of non-standard assets viewed from a lending standpoint, asset-based lending standpoint? There are lenders out there that specialize in these niche or unique assets. They're definitely out there. We did, maybe a year ago, we did a loan based on uh, high-end art, uh, for example. Uh, stuff in the oil and gas industry, lenders are pretty sophisticated. So if it's in the oil and gas industry, odds are you can find a, a home for it. Uh, if it's a promissory note or settlement, it tends to be based on the uh, quality or credit worthiness of the person paying you, um, and that will dictate what your offer is going to be. But that is still out there. So uh, would be worth exploring, certainly seeing what the asset is. It might take, you know, I think that the underwriting is just a little bit tighter. Um, so, you know, if a loan on an asset used to be uh, an eight percent loan, or maybe today it's a ten percent loan, or if it's a was a five year payback. Typically, maybe it's a three year payback. But the money's still out there, and and frankly, that's where a lot of money is flowing right now because the asset provides protection. Yeah, that's really good. So, so um, we're, we're going to advance to the next slide. But hey, Joe, you have a great question. I'm going to I'm going to come to it, and Roger, likewise, I'm, I'm going to come to your question as well. Uh, but I'm going to space out a little bit. Keep keep the questions coming in. Uh, you know, chat box, Q and A box. Uh, the, the good, good, good questions. Okay. So back to you, Joe. 
Yeah, absolutely. And this is actually a great segue to what I was just talking about. So I try to give three examples of transactions that have been done recently by our office just to get you thinking about, okay, what's possible and how does it work in my situation? So the first one I thought was really amazing that we're able to get it done. We got a $3 million commercial building that was refied out of Michigan, that's a state that has been very restrictive uh, related to business activity during COVID. The, the business owner uh, was being sued by the primary mortgage holder on the property, and we were able to get a refi done for $3 million to pay off the original lender, pay off a couple of other bills, and it, it, was, a, it was getting that business owner a situation kind of out of the fire and reset with a two-year term loan, I'm sorry, two-year note with a balloon at the end. What's amazing is that he was getting sued by the primary lender. And so here's a new lender coming in, seeing that and still willing to loan. Now, that, that's pretty good. <laughs> right? That's it's, good. It's, to me, yeah. it's tremendous. Now, in a normal time yeah. frame, normal time, instead of getting that cashed out for 3.1, he would have been able to cash out 4.1. That's a $5.5 million property in that example. So you see the adjustment. The lender goes, hey, I feel good about real estate. And we, you know, we read about that. The real estate market on the residential side is doing well. And that's also on the commercial side. So I think that's also played a role in the whole thing. But I thought that was a home run, client's very happy. Now he's got two years to try to reset himself and find a new lender back on a longer term loan and make that work. Um, the second was uh, uh, asset-based loan. This is a really interesting case. Uh, this is one where this guy does about 14 million in uh, trash removal, Chick-fil-A's, hotels, things of that nature. And he had been stacking up these quick cash that we had mentioned earlier, these quick cash loans, 16 of them in total, over $600,000. We were able to leverage his clients, the great uh, credit worthiness of his clients, to get him a working line of credit for, over, uh, for around $400,000 that allowed him to pay off some of the advances, gives him some working capital, and... Again, it was just kind of thinking outside the box and trying to find an asset and a lender that we could, you know, that, that we could match up. Um, and then lastly was the example that I provided earlier, uh, tech company, uh, bank lender uh, pulled their line. They needed access to capital quickly, uh, leverage their client relationships or their client credit worthiness. And we were able to get somebody to step in and seven, that was the example earlier, seven business days because the bank, at a, at a Florida lender, the bank just said, hey, I'm not going to lend anymore. That's it. You got to pay off the line. And so, you know, they were in a jam. That was seven. That was uh, a start on a Monday and a fund on a following Wednesday. So that was uh, great to be able to get that done. And that's all recent. That's all within the last, say, two to three weeks. Yeah, that's really good. And um, there's some good questions here. Let's, let's do the next slide and then, then I'm, I'm going to go back to the questions that are coming in. So this one, you know, every, it seems obvious probably to every business owner, um, but you really have to go through what your needs are. Talk it through because there are so many variations of money out there. It's not, sometimes we get, caught up in a, hey, there's the thought that there's the, the quick expensive money, that cash advance money. Then somewhere in the middle, there's this intermediate money. I'm not really sure what's in there. Maybe some asset-based loans, maybe a little bit of credit money. And then there's the bank, that there are only three steps and there are only thus three variations. And that's really not the case at all. So to kind of talk through what your needs are and try to match with what's out there is really an important process. And I think the other thing, I, so I own my business, I don't have any partners. And sometimes it's just helpful for me to talk to somebody and go, hey, this is what I'm thinking about. What do you think? It just helps in the verbalization of it and the, 
and to be able to talk to somebody who can give me their thoughts on it so I can kind of zone in on, yeah, that's what I thought, or, oh, I hadn't thought about that, that's different. So let's just kind of go through where your business is today, what your needs are, and then try to match that up with different options that are out there. And then ultimately you as the business owner, you're the one who understands best, knows best. So you'll be able to figure out kind of where the pieces go to accomplish what your plan is. Yeah, it's, re it's really good. Hey, um, so bear with me one more second, Joe, with the, with the question sure. there. It would, but yeah, Joe, Joe on the, the questions here, because it, this next slide will answer some of the questions that are, that are coming up. So I think I'll do one more slide here. Um, kind of kind of build on some of these, you know, these themes that Joseph is sharing with you. you know, what are the, the common hurdles? And this is what Joseph and I both see, right? Is um, and we, we come at I look we look at things from a growth CFO standpoint, that accounting standpoint, the, you know, that number story. That you know, many times when you look at the financials, you know, especially a third party, a banker, a lender who looks at lots of financials. You know, the, the number story is confusing, right? The numbers tell a story. You know, you know why are things going up or down? And um, it, it a lot of times it's clear that the the, the CEOs and the, the profit and loss managers of the business are not using the, the multi financials every month like a scoreboard because the number story is just it's just whacked. Right? It's weird. It, it raises more questions than it answers. Right? So so be, before you go to the lenders, you know, this kind of goes to your question, uh, Joe Bain. Uh, you know, get get the number story straight, right? And really, best practice is use your monthly financials every month, like a scoreboard, to identify action. You know, what, what do you do to, to drive those outcomes you want in your business? And then the things like slow billing, right? You, you hear day sales outstanding, days payable. Uh, you know, if, if you're slow in um, billing clients and collections are out, and if collections are really, you know, out in that 120 days and older bracket, it, it starts to make the lender think, huh? Maybe that's not a good collection, right? Maybe the business either didn't do the work and earn the money, or the business just doesn't have good collection processes, right? There's something there's something not right in the business. That's what the, that's what that's telling the that's what it tells you as a CEO. That's what it tells your your managers, and, and that's definitely what it tells a third party, somebody on the outside. So, um, and it, and it's not hard to see. It really pops out, right? Uh, you know, if accounts payables are growing, if tax liabilities aren't paid, you know, those red flags, you know, red flags, a lot of lenders won't even touch you if you have overdue tax liabilities, right? Because they, they, they don't know what's going on there. Um, if your accounts payables aren't right. And um, and then, you know, uh, I, I don't know, I think if not all, many lenders are going to run your business financials against industry benchmarks, you know, that, that database, you know, how are you doing compared to everybody else, right? Are you average, better than average or, or, or worse, right? So, so these things, in, in our case, you know, kind of answering Joe, Joe uh, Bain's question, um, we use the same tools that the banks use to look at the business, you know, how much free cash do we have to take on a loan and show the bank that we can actually service the loan principal and interest. Uh, we, we run the benchmarks because we want to know what story they're going to see first. And quite frankly, we want to fix things, uh, you know, within the, the counting principles that to get that foundation right, to get that number story right. And then from a from a gross CFO standpoint, looking forward, you know, what what does the business expect to do month by month? You know, by engineering profitability, you know, using those those, those you know, by the old name budgeting, but it's more than that. How do you engineer profitability and and learn to execute against that. Lenders are, you know, some lenders are looking for that level of, of precision. So, um, Joseph, before before we kind of answer, I, I want to go to Joe's Bain's questions in the in the, the question box here. But would you add anything to the, the common hurdles that that you see from a you know the inadequate financial control standpoint? Well, I think those are, listen. I think those are all good points. It's the old saying: you only have one chance to make a first impression, and these lenders are seeing these all the time. So I had uh, a large medical practice the other day send me over their financials. And I saw immediately everything was booked as short term liabilities that should have been long term liabilities. And I am right there. I made a judgment. OK, that person doesn't have good financial controls or a good uh, accounting team putting it together. Boom. There's your first impression. So 
I, I think to your point, making sure that the business owner understands how everything should be allocated, how everything should be reported and understands those numbers. And a lot of times a business owner goes, well, I have a CFO for that. I have a CPA for that. Mm -hmm. But the business owner really needs to understand it themselves. You know, it's a it's a common trap to fall into that. Well, they're, they know it better than I do. They understand these debits and credits. No, it's really on you as the business owner to understand that. That's one. Two, the other thing, Kirk, and all this is, what really are the issues? And when I talk to business owners, they don't quickly or easily share, hey, I have a lawsuit here, or hey, I'm behind over 90 days with this lender, or I've got this, or I've got that. And you know, my view is, and I think your view as well, Kirk, is let's hear everything. We're only here to help you run a successful business. Everything we do is on contingency. So I can't help you if I don't know where the problems are and we can't have honest conversation. Every story is a little bit different. Uh, and I, and Kirk, I agree with everything that you said regarding uh, slow billing, tax liabilities, things of that nature. Yeah, and literally with us, put it on the table because then, yes, it's, it's a puzzle. You can figure it out. And, um, and once you make a first impression, good or bad, it, it sticks. <laughs> Very hard to undo after that, you know. Um, so, so Joe Bain, to answer your question, you, J Joe Bain asked, uh, you know, do you work together and line up a complete financing, banking, and credit process, uh, you know, the business plan? And it, the short answer is yes. I mean, Joe and I work really close together. So, um, depending on what your needs are, either, either he alone or us together can really get it done for you. Um, and, and Joe, Joe Bain, let me know if. if if I, if I didn't answer your question, but, but yeah, we work together. We, um, we've had some victories, huh, Joseph? Um, yeah. We want to have, have more. We Anyone? have. And, and I kind of feel like uh, the, the doctor analogy works really well. So mm -hmm. patients come in needing financial help. And, and at least for my role, I'm not a surgeon. So I'm not viewing everything through, hey, you must do this. Sometimes an attorney does that. Well, you have this, then let's file in court, right? Everything is about a legal process to them. I kind of feel like I'm a general practitioner. Let's, let's diagnose it. Let's see where the problems are. And here's a prescription that you need to take to get everything healthy again. And then as part of that prescription, you know, talk with Kirk or do this or do that, right? But that, and I think for everybody in their business, I think they need that. Even if they feel healthy, it's still good to go in and get a physical and, and make sure everything is as, as you think it is. Yeah, there, there might be opportunities that a specialist would say like, hey, you, you could be even even better, right? That kind right. of, so. okay, so so let, let's go on, um, you know, Roger, to your question, you know, can you borrow money to purchase a business uh, if the current owner will assist in financing? What, what do you think about that, Joseph? The answer is yes, you can do that. Now, if you go to the lender and go, uh, let, let me let me uh, give an example. Okay, there's a th uh, business for sale for three million. Um, the seller's going to take back a note for half of that, so you have to come up with a million five. If you if you go to a lender and say I need to borrow off of my credit for that purchase, that's not going to work. But it, what a lender says is, listen, I'll give you money if you fall into one of these buckets: the the credit worthiness bucket, the uh, asset bucket, et cetera. And then what you do with the cash is up to you. But um, so that's a better way maybe to look at it, but the answer is yes. And we've been able to, to make that happen. So that's, that's worth exploring again, especially if that business has assets or you buying it, you've got a good balance sheet, then you can make something work. Yeah. And, and, and even just kind of step out, if you have an existing business, you know, that the government SBA 7A loan, you, you can use those funds to buy, acquire another business, right? To, to grow strategically. So there, there's a lot of possibilities. Yeah, um, and that actually raises a good point, which is sometimes you've got to package these things together. It is like a puzzle, Kirk, as you were saying just a minute ago. Okay, I need, in that example, I need a million and a half. Okay, let's look at the cards that we've got in front of us. And then let's figure out where we can put together that million and a half. Okay, I can get 750 
you know, uh, A money here, I can then layer in 500 B money and then a little bit of the C money. And then once you're in the business for six months, we can repackage it into all A money. So again, that's where mm -hmm. having a dialogue about the needs assessment and, and the assets and the different uh, uh, cards we have to play, so to speak, is very important. Yeah, very, very good. A lot of possibilities. There's a lot, lot, lots out there. So, so let's go to Brian's question. Um, he's thinking about the asset-based lending, and he's asking, you know, what about using a fully executed government contract on which they have started billable work, but they have a 60-day lag between when they do the work, build the government, and get paid, which is probably pretty typical for government, right? We, we do a lot of government contracting in, in the D.C. area. Um, what, what, do you, you know, is, is there working capital for that, Joseph? Absolutely. There, there yeah. are lenders who are just specific in that space. There are people who, lenders who do uh, state and federal contracts, and then there are lenders who go, hey, I won't touch it because it's a niche. But there are a lot of, it's a competitive space, which is good for you in terms of you probably have some options. And it depends on um, how quickly they pay. It depends on where you need the money in the process, how much money you need. But yeah, that's a very active uh, market right now, and you should have no problem with that. Yeah, I mean, Brian. In short, I mean, I mean, heck yes, because I mean, that government government contract. Let's face it, the government has a, a taxable base, still, right? They they do pay their bills, so so there are. I know firsthand from Joseph, you know, things that we've done together, that there's lenders who want to do like like you know, it could be you know, an asset based facility based on the AR. You get a certain percent up front kind of stuff. And, and some of the percentages go quite high. Um, I mean, unbelievable how high they'll go because it's it's government, right? It's, you're going to get paid. So um, yeah, I will tell you, Kirk. If somebody calls my office and says, "Hey, I have uh, some government contracts. Can I get financing?" I'll, I, I'd say to myself, but "It's probably going to be <laughs> the easiest call of today trying to solve his problem, right?" So, Brian, yeah. you're you're in a good position with that. I, you should have a lot of options. We'll, we'll, we'll connect with you, Brian, and it, it, as well as Joe, we'll, we'll follow up with you about how to how to get your your thing done that you're you're emailing about, or that you're you're chatting about. So, um, yeah, these those are those are good. You get, I, I can almost feel myself getting excited. Be those are things that you can get done, right, and get fuel in the tank. Um, I literally feel like I don't even see. I got goosebumps. <laughs> well, these are great questions because, you know, for me in terms of how we operate. I, I love specific scenarios and specific questions, right? Let's talk about, great, there's a lot of money still out there, but how does it fit for this particular business? So it's good to get into some of the detail here, some good yeah. questions. It, it's doable. And it, it, the banks, lenders have tightened, guys. We're in, a, we're in a pandemic recession and supply chains are messed up, um, but, but this is not the end of commerce, <laughs> okay? Right. right. And um, just like we got through stuff before, you know, some of us, we're going to lose some of us along the way, but most of us are going to make it through. So it's, it's putting together a puzzle and get, getting, getting what you need to run your business. So, Joseph, what, what will you gain? Well, let me go back to kind of the big picture. Everything we do is on contingency and with a very long-term perspective. So, I, again, I take the analogy of it's like coming to see the doctor, going to see the doctor and getting a, mm -hmm. and getting a checkup on what you qualify for, how you should be looking at it, things you can do to improve your business. So to me, if nothing else, you're gonna get a wonderful assessment of, of where you can go with financing for your business. And again, we're not specialists. You'll find people, hey, we only do real estate. Hey, we only do equipment. Hey, we only do this or that. And so when you call them up, what are they gonna focus on? They're gonna focus on, do you have real estate? So I think our model is different, not only from the contingency perspective, but because we have expertise in all these different categories. We've been doing it for a long time. We've helped over 2,000 companies since I opened in uh, 2012. So we've got a lot of experience with it. So you're going to walk out with a better understanding of what's possible for your business. Ultimately, you know what's best. Our job is simply to inform you, you've got these tools available if you want to access it. So with that, you know, you can move forward, you can think about it, you can you can be ready at that point in time in the future when you need that capital. And then frankly, 
you should sleep a little bit better at night because you have more information because you know what's possible as opposed to simply wondering, laying awake at night, wondering what will happen if, what will happen if. And for a lot of business owners, that's, that's how they operate. You know, they worry at night, especially what happens if and trying to take that risk off the table. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you know, tr I mean, I, I get a deep sense of security if there's cash in the bank, plenty of it. Right. Because then you, you get, it kind of buys you time and resources to figure things out when, when things happen differently. Even, even, even when things go better than expected, you have the resources to jump on it. Right. So, um, you know, you know, access to right capital is good. Is there, is there anything else you want to say here about what, what the benefits are, Joseph? No, I think that's the, that's probably money is not as simple in some ways it is simple but in some ways it's very complicated so educating yourself about it and plan kind of going back to what we said in the beginning having a plan for it being more informed about it is helpful i, I get a lot of people who don't put thinking into the different options that are out there so if for example if you have a good business that qualifies for uh, an asset based loan, but instead you decide to take a credit score loan or uh, one of these cash advance loans. The next time you go looking for money, that next lender is going to look at, well, what did they do last time? And if what they did last time was get C or D grade money, and you're talking to an A lender now, that A lender is going to go, no, no way. I'm not going to touch it. But if you went and you got B money, and then you went and you talked to an A lender, they go, oh, okay, you're in my ballpark. You know, somebody else qualified you for B money. That makes me feel more comfortable. The point of all that is there are a lot of these things that need to be thought through so you don't end up six months down the road being boxed in and having no access to money. So anyways, for all those reasons, I think it's good to kind of get a, a health checkup on your financing capability or options. And then again, from what you do with that is up to you, you know best. Yeah, and then, let's, let's highlight this point. I mean, you, 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 I think you're the only firm that I, I know about, much less work with, that does contingency-based lending. You know, it, not just lending. You, you, help, you help companies solve their accounts payable. You, you settle things for something less, and then same same thing for tax. You help them settle their, or solve their tax liabilities. Um, and even at times, you, you have you have experts you go to to help. CEOs, we, a lot of times us CEOs, we, we damage our credit because, you know, go on the business, right? You know, right. and um, you, you have a certain amount of experts that, that you can refer to to help repair that credit. So, so you know, that contingency based solution is really attractive. See, from a CFO standpoint, we like it. We, we like, you know, prove it, earn it, show us you can do what you say you can do. And, that, and, that, and that's how, you, that's what your approach is. Yeah, it's a unique approach. I, I, uh, I think about it from time to time. Okay, is there a better way of doing this? And I can't come up with it because ultimately, a relationship, personal or business is based on trust. We know that in our everyday life with employees, for example, do I trust my CPA? Do I trust my CFO? Do I trust my operations manager? So everything's built on trust. And I know that, especially during these times, you can't really create trust because you can't go meet somebody. Hey, I can't go meet Brian or I can't go meet Steve. But if I let Brian and Steve know, listen, this is how we do it. The business has to win first. If the business wins, everybody wins. It's a very simple concept. So anyways, that's, that's how we've done it since I started. And, and that's how we're going to continue to do it. And to your point, Kirk, going back to um, what we do, we help companies not only find good working capital, but we help companies deal with uh, uh, foreclosure notices on their property, deal with vendors that are have cut them off, deal with uh, people who are suing them, deal with lawsuits. Uh, a lot of companies these days just simply have too much debt. They can't service because their revenue's down. So we're restructuring. If you look at your balance sheet at the, on the liability side of the balance sheet, Anything on that side, we can restructure, we can reduce, we can 
frankly, remove. So a couple of examples, just to put some thoughts in your head about what's possible. Uh, a client owed uh, about $2 million out of Atlanta, Georgia to the IRS. And we got them on a $5,000 a month payment plan, which if you run the numbers is, I think a 30 year, around a 30 year payment plan with the IRS. That's possible. Um, I've got another client who's got about $900,000 worth of unsecured debt, mainly credit cards and some of that uh, more expensive cash advance money. Mm -hmm. um, we're able to wipe away all but about $50,000 of it, saving them $850,000. And then we charge a percentage of the savings that we create. So, you know, we put out a lot of fires. We restructure a lot of things. We try to keep it all out of court and on a, as friendly a, a, a basis as possible. So anyway, it's a unique, it's a unique model. And yes, Kirk, it's, I keep thinking I'm going to find somebody else who has that model, but nobody does. Yeah, I, I haven't seen it yet. And I mean, you, you jump right into the crosshairs of what most people would jump out of, right? The, the liability side. So it's, um, you know, some people like to fight fire like that and, and get, get things done. I'm glad, I'm glad you're one of them. So, um, I'll, I'll say it for you, Joseph. I mean, de definitely, you know, good, good guy to talk to you about some ideas around. I mean, uh, you know, we, we work with Joseph, more than one client, debt restructuring, getting access to capital. Um, been a, we deal with a case right now, a massive tax liability, really complicated, and we're, we're getting through it. And then um, vendor payments. So, so Joseph, you're the, you're the guy to call, right? I'm the guy to call. And it really... It can be a simple fix, but it typically takes two or three different pieces. If you're choking on your cash flow, again, remember, you don't go out of business for having too much cash. You go out of business because you don't have cash. So cash is something, if you simplify down what we do, we're preserving cash. We're giving you more time with your cash, and we're hopefully giving you some additional cash in the form of a working capital uh, line or loan. Very good. And we, we do work hand in glove, right? We, we take that role, we're accountable for producing certain results, um, you know, side by side with the CEO. So, so definitely email me, contact me if you want to get your numbers right, engineer profitability. Uh, I'm, I'm going to reach out to the folks that, that sent, you know, sent the questions in the, in the box, but anybody else, I mean, you know, um, you know, would love to be on a phone call with you, find out what, what's really doable and what, what, what you know, we'll do that with you. So um, thanks for attending. And this, this is good. This is the last show for this year. And then we're going to come back the, the um, I think it's the first week of January, we're going to do our next webinar. So i um, going to talk about using the, the numbers of the first week of January. So Joseph, anything you want to say to the folks in the audience? No, I think, I think we've covered it pretty well. I, I, I would just maybe try to emphasize that there are still a lot of options out there. And again, just always good to be informed in terms of what those options are. But I hope everybody has a safe and, and happy holiday. And, and let's hope that things get better in 2021. Yeah, and we're, we're not going to follow up with the folks that there. I got, I got a list of four folks that sent questions. And I'll, I'll do a joint email with Joseph. And uh, good things ahead. And Brian, th thank you for your comment. So, well, um, good things ahead. And that's that's a wrap for today. And I'll see you next year. <laughs> Thanks, everyone. Bye bye.